Hello, ladies. Welcome to another episode of Women of Grace. I'm Alexa Morian, and with me, I have Rena Chahan. So, Rena, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself so the ladies can get to know you? Thank you. Hi, Alexa. Hi, everyone. I'm Rena Chahan. I've been uh, coming to Bethlehem Church for 18 years now, Grace. Uh, a big, uh, a lot of uh, my good friends and family are coming to the same church, and I'm very blessed. I am married to Lenny Chauhan, probably a lot of the you know, families there know him too, and I have a beautiful 12-year-old daughter, Megan. Uh, moved to New Jersey from Texas uh, about three days before my wedding. I got married at uh, Bethlehem Church. Uh, wow, that's so cute. Yes, yes. and uh, um, you know, I've been a believer for, I don't know, 20 years at least, wow. maybe more. Um, I became a believer in Dallas uh, through some of the women that reached out to me and shared the gospel with me. Got baptized at Dallas too. And I, I grew up as a Catholic. Um, my family members are still all Catholics. I'm the only one who left the Catholic Church mm-hmm. and became a believer. I couldn't be happier. Um, um, that's a little bit about me. Uh, and uh, what else? And I also, um, when I moved to New Jersey again, there was a lot of uh, tension for me because I didn't like the state. I didn't, for a, for a southern Probably Texan, very different you know, from Texas. Very different. But the church is what helped me through that difficulty of uh, transition. And uh, even uh, my pastor talking with him, Pastor Ken, um, uh, there was a lot of help with the church um, that I, I could go and sit with them, share my fears with them, share my uh, hurts with them. Uh, there was beautiful families that we would be doing Bible studies with. And uh, it, it took a while to adjust to the state and uh, even a, a new culture of marriage because I'm from the southernmost tip of India. My husband is from the central to northern part of India. We don't take, speak the same language. Oh, so, really? <laughs> oh, wow. There was a, there was a lot of, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of adjustments I was making. And I'm sure he was also. But uh, um, we women, I don't know about everyone, but we women, when we are in a struggle and a turmoil, we think it's just us. You know, mm-hmm. the other yeah. side is just fine. Um, but uh, um, for me, definitely, I was, I wanted to be the center of the problem, not the solution. And mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so there were bold women that speak, speak, spoke to me and pointed out to me about the benefits of being happy also. And eventually, here I am. I'm, I call Jersey my second home now. I'm very happy to be here. And we're happy to have you. a real estate license, yes. Yeah. Oh my goodness, a real <laughs> yeah. estate license now. Yeah, now you I really have a real Jersey. estate license uh, in order to, uh, like, and I wanted to get to know Jersey a little bit. Mm-hmm. I know Jersey now. Yeah, that's definitely one way to get to know Jersey, driving around, seeing all yes. of the real estate. Yeah. Well, that's a little bit about me, Alexa. Well, thank you for sharing. That was great. So um, with all the adjustments from Dallas to New Jersey to married life, all of that, and I'm sure more adjustments with what we're experiencing now in the world, what has God been doing in this time of your life? Um. You know, just like I mentioned earlier about being in Jersey was difficult already for me. And I'm I'm not a person who like to stay at home or not have um, company around or, you know, um, I'm a very social person. So I I struggled with a little bit of loneliness at first. I said, you know, this is hard. And what do I, what do I do? What do you want with me, God? I know I cannot do real estate right now. I cannot do... Um, a lot of anything I enjoy don't have at least my side of the family around here Lenny's side of the family is here but uh, again everybody is like distancing because of what we are going through so um, I did pray I asked God what do you want me to do Uh, I'm again going into that struggle of not liking New Jersey uh, you know and I said I didn't want that Um, God put me in a position I um, I was working with a few moms from my, my daughter's school who are also believers. Uh, and uh, there was a project that we needed to do. And um, I'm not even sure like, if I'm going in the right direction with this, but uh, God showed me 
that if I continue to rely on him, if I continue to be happy with him and my faith, uh, he's always going to open doors. He's always going to show the things that we can do. Uh, we don't need to, we are not lonely. We feel lonely, but we are not lonely. And um, so I prayed about that uh, one task our these women had taken over and I was supposed to be the one that is leading the task is to appreciate the teachers in the school. Teacher Appreciation Day, that was a task I took on as a parent volunteer committee. And everybody was like, uh, you know, we don't know we can do this now because we are, everyone is struggling. Everyone, so I prayed again and I would, ask them again, you know, hey, are we doing this? What do you think? Um, and uh, no response. And one woman reached out and she said, hey, you know, why don't you send one more time and then suggest something? I said, you know, guys, let's just ask for a donation from parents. See, whoever can do it, they'll do it. If somebody cannot do it, they won't do it. And I said, you know, somebody who cannot do it, I'm in the boat, same boat. I may not be able to do what I was able to do before. Alexa, we, collected ten thousand dollars wow that's amazing the teachers because it was all about praying about it it was not about you know i want to do this no it was about like god show me something that is glorifying you and he did we collect and each of those full-time teachers when we were giving them the gift cards i i was crying i said oh, wow we did it we did it and um thank you god you know, it had nothing to do with doing anything for me at that point. It was mm. like completely someone else um, that was serving the kids. I was teaching the kids. And um, I had never done anything like this in my life before. This was the first time. And I trusted him. We all prayed, the three women, uh, and plus maybe prayed through it. And um, I, we saw the outcome. That's so, awesome that you got to see yes. it. Yes. Uh, so that's one thing God taught me during this time. We are not alone. There are people out there, he, we just have to trust him that he will connect us with the right people for the things that we are asking for. He's not going to, if he says no, then, then that has to be something we accept as hard as it is. <laughs> but uh, he, most often, he will show us that there is a way out in everything, in our desires, if it's in the right place. Yeah, I like what you said when you said um, that you just have to be happy in your faith and God will, you know, provide, he'll show you what you need to, cause you're trusting him. You're doing it for him. And I, I really like that. Cause I think, especially during this time, it's so hard to be happy in our, in our faith, because it just feels like you said, like we feel isolated. We see the things around us and we're not sure what's, what's going to happen. What's tomorrow going to look like? What, what even the next minute's going to look like for us, a lot of us. Exactly. Yes. And I really like that you said, like, to just be happy in our faith, to just, happy. just trust him. And I really, that, I think that was really great. That was really great wording. No, thank you. Thank you. Yes. You know, happy in our faith. Um, he's not changing, right? Our circumstances are changing, but he's right there. And, uh, you know, uh, as a baby Christian, I would have never understood that. Mm -hmm as growing in faith and having women around. Um, damn, does that mean I'm always happy or no? No, I'm not going to be always happy, but I'm finding myself more content for the things I have, for the things I do not have. I'm even finding more content that, that it's okay. Uh, he's opening even something bigger. It's the way I'm looking at those things that is not answered. Yeah. It's a, uh, and it just gives me the tingles to even think that it's like, you know, yes, what, what could he be opening out there, you know, for me, for his, for his child. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I've done for this. Yeah. I like what you said there too, when you were like, um, that he's the same, like the world around us is changing. Everything is changing, but he's the same as he was back then. Yes. In the Bible we read, our past, our future, he's the same today, tomorrow, and yesterday. And I just, it's so, it's a good reminder for ourselves that the world and us, we're changing, but our God is still the same. And he is, Absolutely. he's got big plans for us as daughters of, of his kingdom. Like he has plans for us and who knows what they're going to be. And it's kind of exciting. It's like opening a present. Like you have no idea. <laughs> We have no idea, right? Yes. Yeah. 
um, it's terrifying and exhilarating all at the same time. Exactly, exactly. And he uh, he has shown me. I didn't used to read the um, Old Testament much, mm. but uh, to to see that. Um, I'm, I'm, I hope I'm not jump, jumping ahead, but to see that, um, you know, one thing I'm jealous for, I'm jealous for his love. Mm. That's one thing I am jealous for, um, because I see how he cared for his people, how much, how many times, how many times, you know, through David, through Moses, through Job, through Joshua, through everybody, he's, he's delivering and he's keep on giving, 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 you know, and uh, here we are, we are trusting him, right? So uh, to, to know what is, what is his plan? What is, how is he going to do this for me? I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah. So a question for you, do you feel loved by God even during this time? Cause you said you're jealous for his love. So do you feel that? I do. I do. Um, I would uh, share share one thing with you. I sorry. <laughs> no, don't apologize. Um, you know, Alexa, I was on um, I was on a medication um, for some time in my life, and um, there was a trial time that happened when I was back in Dallas. I was uh, um, diagnosed with partial complex seizures, and it was something that was very difficult for me to swallow because nobody in the family ever had it. And I was an adult. I was going to UT Dallas and uh, I had a stress time, very, very stressful time in my yeah, life. And, uh, yes. And I, um, I was driving to school. I had not eaten anything and I was like weighing maybe 95 pounds or something. And I, um, because of all the stress and as I drove, I lost control of the car and I drove into a, parking spot of, a, of a, 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 a man who was working under the car. He was working under the car. I hit the car and my car just stopped and he ran out and started banging on my window and said, uh, I won't say all the words he said. Right. But, I can imagine what he said. What are you doing? And I was not responding. And uh, uh, apparently I was not responding and the paramedics came and uh, I only remember the paramedics dragging me out of my car. And the, this man apparently called the paramedics and uh, they took me to the hospital and they, the doctor did all kinds of testing and nothing could be found. And he said, well, I, you know, Rina, I hate to say this to you, but I think you had a pop seizure. And I said, no, I cannot have seizures. And um, he, um, he asked a lot of questions and everything is no, but then they did an MRI that was also no. And once they did the EEG of the brain, uh, that's when they saw the seizure. Anyway, so fast forward, and this is how many years. So the doctor really put me on trial, so many medications, and one of the medicine almost killed me. Um, oh, because, wow. <laughs> yes, uh, it almost killed me. And that's the reason I'm sharing this with you, because... Uh, I got severe reaction called Steven Johnson, where your own body starts to um, um, like produce so much immunity, everything swells up. Um, you know, your lips, uh, your face, your under the feet and arms, everything. So I was in a isolated ICU for several days before they could, I know, um, get me back to normal. And I looked like I had fourth degree burn. Uh, I, oh my, gosh. my whole skin, everything was gone. So, um, the, they tried some other medicines and every time it was like not working. Even when I moved to New Jersey, that was one thing I told my husband when he came to meet me in Dallas, you know, I said, hey, I want you to know I have this thing. And he said, I know, I'm not afraid. It's okay. So um, when we moved to New Jersey, uh, someone from the church uh, recommended a very good doctor uh, to go consult with. And he was the first doctor who was a but ever about to just be able to give a medication that completely, I cannot say stopped, but completely took care of the problem. I have to be on a medicine, so I don't say I stopped. Right. So now, fast forward all the way to now, this time, during this COVID. Um, even when I was pregnant with Megan, I had to be on that medicine. It was a very, very scary pregnancy for me. So I... Lenny lost his consulting job in December, and uh, about two months we did the you know private insurance, and then uh, he was about to start another insurance 
because he said, yeah, yeah, I found something. Mm -hmm. And in between this time, here comes my medication due. And the medicine is a brand name medicine, costs about $3,000 per month. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there were times that we had bought it with money like that. Mm -hmm. As a, you know, it was a need and the insurance. Right. Was, uh, I mean, you needed it, yeah. I needed it, but this was not the same time because, you know, here we were struggling mm -hmm. to most, uh, uh, make the ends meet. And um, so I told him, don't pick it up yet. And uh, he said, okay, no, but you don't have it. I said, oh, no, don't pick it up yet. Let me see. And a week went by. I didn't pick up the medicine. Um, two weeks go by. And um, I prayed every day. I said, God, keep me safe. I know you can. He has always kept me safe, even throughout this time. Mm -hmm. Like I would have a seizure sometimes when I would be, I don't even know that I had a seizure. I would be on the road. I would come home. I would get my car into the garage. And all of a sudden, I'm like in a, in a daze. And I don't know why God kept me like that until I got to the garage. Okay, this is in the past. And, mm -hmm. so, and I, had, I have not had a seizure for a long time now, but I've been on the medicine. So, right. but the third week I had a teleconsulting, just like we are doing now with mm -hmm. my neurologist. And he said, hey, you know, how are you doing? And I said, you know, doctor, I do want to let you know one thing. I'm doing good, but I was not able to get this other medicine and I have been off of it now for almost three weeks. And he said, okay. how are you doing? I said, I'm good. And he's like, yeah, I can see that, you know, I'm not seeing anything different in you. I'm not a... And he said, well, Rena, let me get you off of that medicine. And I said, say what? Uh, he said, yeah, um, you don't need it anymore. You've been doing good and you have not had any problems, no headaches, nothing, uh, not any symptoms of anything. Let's get out of it. That's awesome. <laughs> so do I see, did I see God's love? Mm -hmm. Of course, yes. Um, I, didn't, I didn't even pray that. God, take me out of this medicine. I pray, God, keep me safe. Mm -hmm. just, just keep me safe. I know you can do it. And um, he answered that in a, in a much bigger way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. And you're still off of it now? I'm off of it. I've that's been incredible. Um, I called my sister to let her know. She, she is my best friend. She's only a year older than me. Mm -hmm. I called her and I said, guess what? She's like, what? Did you? You buy a car, I said, no, I am off of this medicine. And I could hear her crying. She said, oh. I said, yeah, she's like, you know, I cannot wait to see you. I said, I know, I know. She, because she's been with me, taking me to doctors after doctors when I was mm -hmm. in Dallas. You know, we have no idea why I got this in the first place. But uh, if I don't share this story with you, I am not glorifying God. So mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I told you this. So yes, yeah. that was a big moment of experiencing his love yeah no thank you for sharing that's incredible i'm so glad that you saw god's love in, in an answer of prayer that went beyond your expectations that's it is amazing. beyond it is beyond no thank you so much for sharing um in like i guess you felt god's love but did you have a moment where you clearly thought wow like i love you god like this is amazing like i don't was there a moment that you felt that or so, so he, um, you know, so Lenny was still at the time without the job and he, he got, he applied at places. It's just nothing was coming through. Lenny had been working with the same company for over 20 years. And so when he wow. lost his job, it was hard. It was hard on him. Yeah, he I can even, imagine. He, didn't, he doesn't even know how to interview. Mm. As as he said. Right. He's been there for 20 years. You know, so, um, on the 27th of March, um, it's the, the, it was like a great trial time for, for our country. Mm -hmm. People had lost their jobs. That, that very Friday, I read the news. And uh, so this one job he had applied for, yeah, you know, they called him and he, they said, can you start that Monday? Um, and the offer came on that Friday saying, you know, are you available to start on Monday? And he said, he said, you know, really, can you believe this? I said, I can. I can believe it. Because when we prayed that he would not have to go to the city, he would not have to go outside of the house. Because, um, again, we are in the moment of getting the insurance. You know, right. So much 
happening, so much stress, so much tension inside. So for him to be able to work from home and them asking, you know, we are sending you um, all of your things, uh, phone, computer, everything. Uh, just let us know. Monday is good for you. And I, I said, take it, take it. Don't don't think anything anymore. Take it. The reason, and I, that was my big moment. Like, yes, God, you know, I I had lost my job a while back, back in Dallas. Mm -hmm. I just had. $50 left in the bank. And I said, you know, how am I going to pay for my apartment? What am I going to do? I was the first one to just be, I'm a rebel child with my parents. I, I moved out. I went into my own apartment and all of that. I went to the elders that evening, knowing that the elders are praying. Mm -hmm. And the elders, one of the elders prayed over me and said, you know, even in three days, God, even in three days that Lena would get a job. Um, Alexa, I've been without the job at that time for almost seven months. And uh, third day, I heard a phone ringing and this woman asking something. She said, hey, are you Rena Martin? Um, I'm calling from this and this. I saw your resume on Monster. I said, I'll take it. Because I, I shouldn't even say, she said, I didn't say to you what it is. It's in downtown Dallas. I said, I'll take it. Because all I remembered was the third day. Yeah, that she would get the job, even the third day. So that's the same experience I felt that overwhelming, you know, feeling I had that he's watching out. We could specifically ask him for things, and um, as long as we are not getting um, selfish in our asking, he is deliver. He will deliver. Mm -hmm. Is this job going to take care of everything that we need? No, uh, it's not. But it's a start. It's the beginning, and so that was, I remembered that day when he got the offer, the same way God delivered me, and he's delivering people around me and taking care of us. So that was a huge aha moment for me. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. I love, I love hearing about God's love for people and how they like experience it, and for you and your husband, it was through his provision, his, his answering of prayer, and that's just Thank you for sharing. That was really yeah, heartwarming. Thank you. And, I, you know, we say this, God, I love you. God, I love you. And his commandment, you know, love your God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your, all your soul. You know, Alexa, one change in my prayer is that, that I do, uh, I do say that to him. I say, God, I love you. I love you with all my heart. I love you with all my soul. And I love you with all my mind. Uh, just, just say that to him, it just is comforting to me. Um, it's a, such a comfort when I say that back to my God, my father. Um, so I said it one night and now it's a habit. I don't go to bed without, I, I'm, sometimes I'm very tired after our family prayer and I lay down and I get back up and I sit down and just say that. So it's like, like you know, closure for the day. I love you. Um, I know he's watching over, but just to let him know, good night, you know, I love you. No, I love that. I love that you do that. I think it's so Maybe it's incredible. childish, I don't know. No, I think it's incredible. Like, you should tell people who you love that you love them. So why can't we tell God that we love him? I love that you do that. I've actually, because we've talked about this before, and I've actually started doing that too, like in my career. Oh. I have. And honestly, I like... It's such a good feeling to just add it at the end. Like sometimes like you all like forget after my prayer and I'm like, oh no, wait, got to start again. I have, yeah. to, I have to let him know that I love him. And I started doing that. And honestly, it's just been a great piece in my prayer for myself and for God, you know, to just have that moment. So just wow. talking, like ever since we talked about that, I was like, I want to start doing that. And I have. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't that feel good though? It does though. Like, like we say, like I say, I love you to my parents and my family and stuff. So why, why wouldn't I say it to my, to my God, to my father? Like, you know? And so when we talked about that, I was like, I got to do that. I got to start doing it. And I have, and honestly, like highly recommend to all viewers say it. It's just, I don't know. It's just so good. It's so good it to be open with how you feel. And even when you're, you don't feel the love, just saying that you, you love him because because deep down, you, you, I mean, we do, like we're Christians, we're yeah. his children, we do love him. And so, and it's just like, 
I don't know. It's a different mindset, a different heart heart set, you know. So I really like. I started doing that. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm glad I shared that with you. Then. Yeah. No. Thank you for sharing that with me because honestly, it's it's been a nice piece to my my time with God. So thank you. Awesome, man. Because you know, we 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 hear that we don't need to pray. He knows our. He knows everything mm -hmm. every time, right? But we mm -hmm. still pray. We still let him know. So that's the same way I take this. That oh, I still I'm sorry, my uh, my um, tears are again when I'm, I was looking for a tissue. That's You're fine. <laughs> um, it's still letting him know, and he loves to hear that. He loves to hear from us. Um, so that, that's a, that's one thing I see as another change during this time. Um, I feel at peace when I do that. Would you say that's where you've noticed your growth in your journey with God? Is this I. I did, yes. Um, changing the way I have been praying, changing the way, um, I, I don't know if I ever shared with you my testimony. I, like I said, I came from a Catholic background. So the first time I saw the woman around me praying, I kept my eyes open. I kept looking at them because here I am. I, I, have the, I had a book sitting in the corner. I, I used that book to pray. And here these women were, each of them were closing their eyes and saying, you know, different ways of addressing God, like, you know, my father, our heavenly father, you know, uh, my Lord, my savior. So I kept looking at them, right? And I'm like, wow. And I was the only one with that, the eyes closed because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I come from a very traditional Catholic background. Mm -hmm. So my prayer, I mean, I know it's, it's each of us have that feeling of, of prayer and or that the way that we connect with God. The first time I was ever able to pray like that uh, without having to rely on somebody else's written prayer. You know, Alexa, uh, I, I was, again, like a little kid, like, wow, I can pray now, you know, I, I'm able to pray. Um, so when we had a gathering at my mom's and dad's place, uh, my mother turned to me and asked me, you know, there were a lot of people even from Hindu backgrounds. And my mom turned and asked me, can you pray? Uh, here was the same parents who were so upset with me about leaving Catholic Church. And uh, I looked at her with a shock and she said, yeah, can you pray over the food? And I said, okay. And I prayed again. So each time I grow in my prayer, I remember that living room where I sat there and looked at these women and uh, not knowing how to pray like them. So each time I'm able to get closer and closer to God with my prayer. Uh, my husband makes fun of me. He goes, he'll tell me like, you know, you have a, you have a special connection with God. Like, you know, you pray and he just answers. I said, no, no, it's just, I'm growing. I love praying towards him. I love asking him. Um, I like it, like a little kid getting the, another new toy kind of way. It's the way I pray with God. And so he has grown me in that area even deeper. Um, a lot of discipline is still needed in my prayer, but I still value, I mean, all of us sometimes, I don't, I don't want to walk around feeling guilty that I didn't pray mm -hmm. because sometimes um, I used to get, get that way also. As I was in the few years after I became a Christian, I used to be like, ah, oh, you know, I'm guilty. I'm not doing the right thing. Each, even that thought and turning around and saying, God, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't, even that he hears, right? Right. So knowing that, that he's always listening. I, when I'm driving to go to a place, I'll just ask, you know, would you just sit in the passenger seat with me? I'm scared to go to this place. Uh, you know, please still be there. And um, I find myself like turning and just saying, thank you. I know you're there. You know? So that's, that's me. That's No, that's I love that. I love, honestly, it's very clear talking with you how, how you love God, how open your relationship with him it is. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're very, you just can converse with him. It's just, and, and we should be able to do that. We should just be able to be like, Hey God, what's up? Like, and have him sit next to us. Like if we're having a conversation and you just describing how he's grown you in your prayer and, and hit your love for him. It's just, it's so good to hear. And, uh, and I admire it. I love it. It's great. Like to have this, this connection with our savior that we're supposed to, we're supposed to be able to go up to him like children like we are his kids. Like we should be we able to be kids. like, Hey, like 
I'm scared. Can you sit, can you sit with me? Can you be with me? Or thank you, God. Like this was amazing. Like I, you know, or I love you, God. Like we should, that is how prayer should be. We should be like just having a conversation with him. And I, and thank you for sharing that because, and sharing how he's grown you in that. It's he's growing it, me in that area. It, yes. Um, I hope, uh, I hope whoever is listening is going to be encouraged about, you know, because we women are fragile. Let's just admit it. We are fragile in certain areas. Our emotions are different. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he knows that. He made us. He knows that. And it's okay uh, to be able to. Uh, it, but I'll say this. It took a lot of years for me to get to that level of understanding um, that, that he cares for me. He cares as he cares for Alexa. He cares for me and to just feel uh, that little pride in that saying, thank yeah. you. Thank you. I'm important to you. Thank you for that. So, um, and we as women, we need to get to that level of feeling that, that we are important to him. Uh, each of us in our own, you know, feel comfortable in our image and in our being and yeah. knowing that it's him who's continuously doing things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even be upset, you know, did I ask you about the God, this God, you know, why, what's going on? You know, and, um, but able to be um, humble about it. Mm -hmm. don't, don't get angry. Yeah. Um, that's still a walk. I'm really, really trying hard. Do I get upset? Of course I do. Um, you know, um, I'm sorry, guys. I do. I do get upset. No, I think we all do at one point or another. Um, but each area where we completely submit to him, and that's an area I'm going to now completely surrender to him and say, God, you know, take this other things away from me. I don't want to be angry at certain things. I don't want to be angry at certain people. Mm -hmm. um, you, you take control of it. And that's an area I am confessing to you that I am trying and trying and trying and so hard. I'm, I'm, I'm surrendering that to him. Yeah. But just to know that, that um, I've gotten to that point. Um, it's not something I was able to. Um, yeah. I thought it was a righteous anger. Um, but I'm Keep on giving it. In the morning, I say one prayer. Mm -hmm. um, God, today I want to be, today I just want to be happy. I want to feel content. Um, so all of those other things that come up, um, just already take it away. Um, I'm not even going to give those into your hands. I'm giving it to your feet. Just crush them. I don't want it. I don't want it because I know I cannot handle it. Um, so, and he's, I can already see he's working. He's working with me personally in that area. Yeah. No, thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing your struggle and the words of encouragement. You read my mind. I was about to ask um, if you had any words of encouragement for the people watching, but you answered that. So no, just thank you. Thank you for joining me in this interview, Rena. Like it's been thank such you. a pleasure talking with you and hearing your heart and seeing what, what God's doing with you, you and your growth and, just thank you so much for sharing with me and with everyone watching. And I would, yeah, I would no, like no, to you. share a scripture. Yes, please. Um, so it's a, it's about being pure in heart. I mean, that's, that's the word that caught me. Blessed are the, this is from Matthew 5, 7 to 10. Blessed are the merciful. They will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. Therefore, there is the, theirs is the, okay, because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Um, you know, like I said, each of that merciful, pure in heart, peacemaker, um, if we, women, when we feel persecuted, when we feel like, you know, we are not at the same level of something or even, you know, whatever it may be, but for each of those, he has an answer. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, as women, one thing I want to continue to strive for as a child of God, I want to strive to have a pure heart. Mm -hmm. I will continue to have a pure heart because it's hard. Yeah. Child. Yeah, you know, he or she has a heart that is pure. Mm -hmm. um, 
and God loves that from us too, as grown up as we are. So that that's what I wanted to just share with you. It's oh, thank you for sharing. It's not it. easy, but uh, oh, not. we could uh, we could continue to ask him to make it pure, make it pure, take everything else away. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing that verse. And it's true. We can reach out to him and and pray for for a pure heart and to help us. And I just thank you for sharing that very much. That's when we that's when we see him. That's, yeah. He says that's when we see him. Mm -hmm. And all of the other things are there, but when we when, when do I see him pure in heart? Wow, challenge. So Yeah. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Again, Rena, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on. And I believe that this will be very encouraging for our viewers. And I hope that they've enjoyed it. And all of you watching, thank you for joining us for another episode of Women of Grace. And we hope to see you our next episode. And thank you, Rena, again. It's been a pleasure. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye.